Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, I just wanted, before I start, to play a tip, if you have your permission, because I was challenged by the member for Miku Sov to play a tip where he denied that he said the people of the whole cabinet went to open a toilet in, in Mikunov. So if your permission, can I play it? Your internet, Mr. Speaker. That tonight we must declare war. No, no, not that one. 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 But that, that technology, Mr. Speaker, is. I'm the right thing there. Mr. Speaker, I'll get it. I'll get it. Any anyway, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am sorry that the young students from. Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry the students from England, from Burma University, are not here, are not here this afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Because I'm sure when they would have left here. Which one? Yeah. When they left here, Mr. Speaker, I'll pay it after. When they left, when they would have heard the member from Miku South speak about inflation and the cost of living. I am sure, Mr. Speaker, they shook their head in shame to believe that a former, a former prime minister, a man who the people of St. Lucia elected to control their destiny for five years, and he's stretching to five and a half, would come in this honorable house, Mr. Speaker, and speak about inflation inflation and the cost of living and compare that with when he was in government in 2020, 2021 and mix up the two COVID, mix up, put all of it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a calabash and mix it up, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when the member from Mikusau was prime minister, there was actually deflation. The price of goods went down because there was no demand, Mr. Speaker. There was no demand. The price of goods, there was deflation, Mr. Speaker. But I want to give you the story about cooking gas. Because, you know, we heard this cooking gas story, cooking gas story. And the problem with him, he repeats these lies. And when you point it out to him, they buckle down on the lie. They continue the lie even though you show them that they are lying. Mr. Speaker, in May 2021, the imported price of gas was $40.55. In May 2021. In June 2024, the imported price of gas is $52.40. That's the, that's the gentleman talking about price of gas. In May, when he was in government, it was $40.55. In June, it is $52.40. A 29% increase. 
What was the response of the government that the member for Mikusov led? The response of the government was a subsidy of $9.80 per cylinder. Yes, alone. $9.80 a cylinder. What is the response of our government? A subsidy of $16.30. Mr. Speaker, and that is why when he makes these proclamations, he never gives figures. He just says whatever he wants. I'm going to come back to, to borrowing, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to come back to borrowing. Because, you know, we came to this Honorable House this morning to improve the welfare and the quality of life of some of the people of this country who are in need, Mr. Speaker, pensioners. What do you expect from the opposition? You expect them to come, and, to come to this honorable house and say, listen, we agree with you, but in normal opposition style, they will say, okay, you could, you could give some more. We will accept that. But it goes all over the road, all over the store, Mr. Speaker, fabricating, making up figures. He talks about debt. He talks about borrowing. All kinds of things, Mr. Speaker, just because... He refused to come to the parliament during the budget to defend, his, to defend his party and to speak for the people of Microsoft. He refused to be here for the budget, Mr. Speaker. He refused to be here for the budget. He refused to be here. And now, when he gets the opportunity, he's going all over the place, Mr. Speaker. But I know Mr. Speaker is late. But I want to just point out a few things. Because, you know, when you allow these things to go unanswered, some people believe it. Borrowing, Mr. Speaker. In 2021, 2021, the government that he led borrowed $583 million in 2021. Last budget, the government that I lead borrowed $307 million. Out of that $307 million, $243 were external borrowing, and 64 million was from treasury bills. That is the sum of our borrowing, Mr. Speaker, in the last budget. Compared to him, in 2021, when he borrowed $583 million, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so you know, when these things are said, and people repeat them, and it pass as if they are goth, Mr. Speaker, I want you to make Another, show you another fact, Mr. Speaker. This Minister of Finance borrowed money from an airport at an interest rate of 13%. That is the finance guru. That's the guy who knows all about finance. That's the guy who talks about managing economies. You want to tell me, at the time when interest rates were between 1% and 3%, you borrow at 13%? 13%, Mr. Speaker. 5% interest and 8% transaction costs. You borrowing, putting a burden on the people of St. Lucia of 13% interest rate to build what you say is an airport. When you came and you found a PP arrangement that all countries in the world go through, you abandon it. You caused the country to spend about 350,000 Canadian dollars and you borrow at 13% and you come and talk about managing economy? 13%, 5% interest fee and 80% transaction cost. And the plan is, and the plan is, Mr. Speaker, the plan is, the plan is, Mr. Speaker, just a minute, Prime, uh, Prime Another Prime point Mr. of order, sir. The member is again misleading now. So there's a fundamental difference between Paying an 8% fee on the, the management cost. What, I'm what's waiting the to hear. On what? what is the misleading? On what? Because what you're saying is not true. What's not true? So it's not true that you can, you, can, you can add 8% to the 4%. You can't do that. The 8% is for the, the construction cost and only for that period. The interest payment is for the entire period of the loan. Two different things. Can't add it up. But what, what, what did he say? He said the interest rate is going to be 13%. But isn't there a period based on what you just said there? that it would be that amount? No, sir. But you just said 
the eight percent would be for the only for the construction costs. So that, me so that means the four percent is every year over the period of the loan. Yes, yeah, so that means only for the, the period construction period. Yeah, but that means for the period of no, construction it'd be thirteen. No, it's not. But what's the, the why, why wouldn't it be? be? I mean, where, where, excuse me, Miss. Where's your math coming from? No, if where is your logic coming if from? It's four percent interest rate. Five. It's, it's four. Five. Remember, cap, cap, remember, uh, capped at four. Remember, remember. You just said there is a 4% or 5% for the duration of the loan. Right. And an 8% for, for the construction period. Only for the construction but period. But does that not mean between the taking of the loan and the construction period is 13%? No, sir. They're two different. Remember, two different, uh, member two Vakash, different please, the, please proceed. The 8% is a member, cost of construction. Member, I've asked the member to continue. No, it's no, sir. Because no, it's wrong. not. We're not going to they're debate wrong. that. We're How could it be? How can you have 8%, which is a construction cost, the cost of doing the building, and, and, and equate it to being interest rate? It cannot be. There's no formula that would come up with that. Member for it's egregious East. and it's wrong, and, it, and, and, and I'm asking you, Mr. Speaker, that he withdraw that statement, because it's categorically wrong. Member, I can say the interest rate is 13%. Member for Castries East, shall you proceed? Mr. Speaker, during the construction stage, the interest is 13%. During the construction stage, the interest is 13 percent, 5 percent interest, and 8 percent construction costs. If, if, if you want to, to, if you want to go this way, I'll, I'll go with you. If you want to go this way, I'll go with you. So during the construction stage, the interest rate was 5 percent, and the transaction cost was 8 percent. 8 and 5 is 13, means the taxpayers of this country paid 13 percent on the loan that you borrowed to build Human Rights National Airport. For two years. But you that's not the years? point. So, so it's correct now? But that's not the point, but that's... It's correct now. It's 13% during the construction stage. No, no, he never said it was for the I entire... I never said so. In fact, you, the construction stage. you just... Now further. You just... Oh, just remember, Picasso, he just hold on. You just five seconds ago disagreed with my premise, which you now accept. Doesn't make sense. I said within the construction period. Remember, Cassius, please proceed. Mr. Speaker, halls of justice. And you know, this man from Microsoft, he speaks as if he's a saint. And he was such a good guy. And everybody here is so wicked. And we can't run the economy. And the Russians are suffering, Mr. Speaker, lying on who is everybody got father and got parents. Give me God children I don't have. All kinds of things. All kinds of things. Come son, says, oh Lord, help me. That's the man who sat here and laughed at us, ridiculed us, made fun out of us, called us jokers. That's the man who allowed his members come and say, you're crying, you just start to cry. Now because the people reject you, you come and you play as if you're this pious fella that like everybody. Let me further, further, House of Justice. He comes talking about House of Justice. He had to build a building for a million dollars by the by the um, old police station. The member knows very well that the entire judiciary were against a horse of justice going next to police headquarters. He knows that very well. In his usual arrogant style, he decided that he would forget what the judiciary was saying and he was building, he was building a horse of justice next to a police station. When I came into government, I didn't do like him. I didn't match up everything I, I found to play I know better than anybody else. Stop the highway, stop the airport, stop the, 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 the West Coast Road, stop everything. Because, because he knows everything. I didn't do that. Stop St. Jude. I didn't do that. Stop the Sufre, the Sufre Park. I didn't do that. I sat with my, the men and women around me and we decided where are we going? Where are we going? as far as that these projects are concerned. So, the House of Justice. <coughs> he put a bulldozer on the, on the police, on the prison. Before he had any plans, there were no plans in the DCA to build any House of Justice. There were no plans. What there was, was as usual, renderings that put on a computer. These renderings cost the people of St. Lucia a million dollars. 
which I had to pay. Further, in these plans, there was a Canadian company that he had, that he, you know, Mr. Speaker, because of my, the way I was brought up, my parents always taught me, never then I greet another man to serve any purpose. You know, to serve a purpose, Mr. Speaker. My parents taught me to respect people and try my best not to involve people's families, their father, their children in this thing. So I, wish, I just restrain myself from saying a lot of things, Mr. Speaker. But do not believe that I cannot say. I can say. Don't believe you can always push me and let your sorrow get attack me and call me. There was a time when you all said I was sick. I couldn't be Prime Minister. I was sick, Mr. Speaker. God helped me. God helped me. All the things you did, Mr. Speaker, and you play as if you're so pious, Mr. Speaker. But that's for another show. Let's get back to the House of Justice, Mr. Speaker. This member from Microsoft went to Trinidad and he said that the Halls of Justice would cost the people of St. Lucia $11 per square foot with another $10 per square foot to be added on. That's what he said. Let me tell you the facts, Mr. Speaker. The interest, the amortized the the cost of the halls of justice is $143 million to be paid over 12 years. $11.9 million per year. The square footage of the House of Justice is 126,245 square feet. The recovery cost is $7.87 per square foot. He told the whole world it was 10 plus 11, which is 21. That is what he told the world. That is what he told, tells the world about a building that will fundamentally change castries. That's what he tells the world, Mr. Speaker. Now, if I draw a correlation between that and rental payments, you will see that I, I am I'm getting personal. Should I get personal? But I'm not like you. I'm not like you. The fact is, no, I, I'm not like you. I'm not like you, Mr. Speaker. So, you understand? But he tells the whole world and tells people in St. Lucia that we're building one of them, and you know, that's what hurts them. I refuse to respond to these people, these political losers. I know he's responding to them. I know he's to them. I'm not responding to them. One of them said to the world that the House of Justice costs more than an airport. You know, but if you want me to respond, I know it's more than that. I'm not. I'm focused. What you want to do is get me off focus so that I can stop doing what I have to do for the people of St. Lucia. I'm not getting off focus at all, Mr. Speaker. The facts will show for themselves, Mr. Speaker. All the metrics of the economy in this country are showing an improvement, except in the eyes of leader of the opposition. The Chamber of Commerce had a survey that said 77% of the business of St. Lucia are optimistic about the future of this country. No, not for the leader of, of, of the opposition. The money supply in, in the banks is increasing at a point where the banks are over liquid, begging people to borrow money. No, but the country is in chaos. The economy is badly managed. Unemployment is the lowest it ever was in, in, in the, for a long time. No, not for the leader, not for the leader of the opposition. The country is, is in chaos. The chaos is speak up. There is, let's talk about investment, COVID investment. There are hotels. The, the member for Mikosov pretends as if only St. Lucia experienced COVID. COVID was nowhere else except St. Lucia. And I'm sorry these students are not there. Because I'm sure they were ashamed. I'm sure they were ashamed. COVID was only in St. Lucia. COVID was nowhere else. The leader of the, the, leader of the opposition refuses to tell St. Lucia that not one hotel was built in St. Lucia before COVID or after COVID when he was Prime Minister. Not one. Not one. The leader of the, of the, of the opposition, Mr. Speaker, he, I have dealt with the borrowing and the subsidy. Who was the one who put a $1.50 gas 
on who put the gas tax in St. Lucia? Who put the gas tax of a dollar fifty on the people of St. Lucia? Who put it, Mr. Speaker? Who put the gas tax? So, Mr. Speaker, the leader of, of the opposition, he goes all over the place, plain sanctimonious. Anything that he says, anything that he says, he has done worse or he hasn't spoken the truth. Any, I say it again, any statement that the leader of the opposition makes, he has either done worse or he hasn't spoken the truth about it, Mr. Speaker. Because he pretends that he was never in government. He wants the Lucians to forget that he was in government. He wants the Lucians, especially young people, to forget he was in government. He wasn't there at all, at all, at all. Says the government said Lucia borrowed $80 million for programs to never said that the government never borrowed $80 million. The government guaranteed $80 million for a national lottery. And the national lottery has proven that it can pay back its loan, Mr. Speaker. He can, he can pay back his loan, Mr. Speaker. The same way you guaranteed the money for the airport. The same thing you did. But he guaranteed for the airport. He had an airport development tax and he guaranteed for the airport. Same thing. And I still criticize it because I said you should have a, a, a DPP. You see? Mr. Speaker, he's the same man who borrowed $32 million to, for, for Lockerbie. And what Lockerbie did is they put, they put um, artificial turfs on three, on three, you didn't borrow $40 million? Member for Miku South. On the point of order, again, the member is misleading the House. The money for the uh, programs under Lockerbie came from the Taiwanese funds, Mr. Speaker and were grant funds. The repayment, not the money. The repayment. And you borrowed 32 million. You came and you borrowed 32 million because that's when the member for Castro South had the argument with you about, about the documents and things. You said, yes, you borrowed 40 million dollars. You forgetting? Mr. Speaker, there was a loan that was based on the revenue from the Taiwanese money. But there was a loan. The Taiwanese grant, the Taiwanese grant paid back the loan. But there was a okay. loan. So the revenue came and it was a grant. The loan was only a bridging loan <laughs> because we were getting the monies on a, a, over every true. year for five that's years, Mr. Speaker. That's not true. That is, that's not true. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm confused at the point of order. I didn't take a loan, but I took a loan that was being repaid by the Taiwanese. It was a loan. There was a bridging loan, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> for five years, and the money was repaid or supposed to be repaid by the Taiwanese grant money. So ultimately the project is a grant, a grant funded project. All we have to do is pay the interest for the five years, Mr. Speaker. Member of Castries, East, please proceed. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you you know why? You you know why, Mr. Speaker? Because he does not want the young people of St. Lucia to have better played facilities. Because he does not want the Darren Sami ground, the Darren Sami cricket ground, to be, to be proclaimed and acclaimed as one of the best cricket grounds in the world. That's what he doesn't want. Because he doesn't want to let up, Mr. Speaker, because he's a product of Canada. That's a difference. You, you, he hasn't got his... He hasn't got his roots embedded in St. Lucia. He doesn't understand St. Lucia. He doesn't understand Mr. Speaker. Because he was fortunate. He believes that he must pass. And that's why he has to do the things that he's doing. Sit down in the back of a van with, with a suit. Go and eat bread. Go and, and, and go by the market. Just to show as if he's St. Lucian. You're not St. Lucian. You're a product of Canada. That's what you proclaimed. So look, come and, and play sanctimonious. He managed the best economy. In, in, he managed the best economy. He has no proof of his management of the economy. No proof. He cannot give one metric that said he managed the economy properly. Not one metric. Not one metric that can say you are a good manager of the economy. Not one. Borrowing money at 5%, paying 8% transaction costs for two years, 13%. By the time you finish borrow, you, you would have spent $110 million US. Add 5% of that and 8% of $110 million for the time that, that you build in the airport. 
You see how, how much you pay. You call that good financial management? Do you believe for two years? You, the, the airport, you had a cost overrun. You had a cost overrun on the piles on the airport. A cost overrun of nearly $20 million. That's what you went over. That's what you had. There was a cost overrun because the original plan that, that, that you changed. Because you gave Slaspa an instruction. You know, you're speaking about civil servants. You're speaking about civil servants and declaring, and declaring war on civil servants. You went, you, went, you were in an interview telling public servants, that's not your business, mind your business. Don't interfere in government policy. Now you're saying that you're talking about civil servants. One of your people said they, they realize now that they could do without civil servants during COVID. Come and talk about civil servants? Forgetting these things? Forgetting these things? Yes. You said that civil servants must interfere in the government. Now you're talking about you're asking people to declare war, ask civil servants to war. Trying to, what he's trying to do, he's trying to get the civil servants because of the forward movement of this government. He's trying to get the civil servants to be afraid so that they cannot do what they have to do because of the threats that he's putting on them. That's the motive, Mr. Speaker. That's the motive. Threatening people. Threatening people, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the member comes and talks about in, in, inflation. We have subsidized, and the member for Sufre can tell you, we have subsidized sugar, flour, more than any time in the history of this country. We have subsidized it. Come talk about inflation and cost of food. And right now, there's a study going on so that we can look at the goods that are zero rated and the member for library made the point we have the most zero rated items in the region and we increased it by putting building materials on it this year we increased it we increased the zero rated items by putting building materials on some building materials on zero rated, on zero -rated items and there is no health and security levy on that mr speaker so your facts you, must, you can talk about the banana sector. I mean, this, this guy. The, the banana sector. The, the, the Labour Party damaged the banana sector. You went before elections and you said you had signed things to send bananas to France. You had a van. You write on it FAR 15. Just to bluff people. Bluff. Emptiness, bluff, FRL 15, big black van, FRL 15. Both, the, both the, fa the van disappear and the FRL disappear and bananas disappear if it. <laughs> that's, that's your history. That's your history of bananas. What did we do? What did we do? We began, we dealt with the black cigar talker. We are dealing with that, with this pest in, in the banana industry. And we began, we recommence the export of bananas to England. We recommenced it. That's what we did. We recommenced it. And because of factors way beyond our control, and you know that, you know that, that because the factors way beyond our control, we had to stop exporting the, these bananas to England. But we opened the markets in the region. You have markets in the region. Now, we narrow, we opened, we opened new markets in the region. And we narrow. We narrow, we open markets. We open markets in the region. And we never had an issue with boxes. I never said you said so. I said we opened new markets in the region. But you are the one who came here and said that we killed the, the banana sector. I'm responding to what you say. You're responding to what you say. Because there was an issue with Vinero, we do not own Vinero. The government doesn't deal in Renera's production processes. We don't do that. But what did we do? Instantly. We did not go and say who is Labour, who is UWP. We invested a million dollars income support for the farmers of this country. All farmers. All farmers. <coughs> not Labour or UWP. Just like laptops. Just like facility fees. We give everybody not labor, that's what we did. We invested a million dollars in the banana farmers. And last week, the banana farmers received water tanks. 
the banana farmers have never been supported by any government like that in, over the last eight, or eight years. And the, the history is there. And what I'm saying is, and I always tell journalists, fact check you, fact check you. Because you say things and you turn around. You went to Dan Sammy Grounds with your suit and you had a, a phone. And you said, look at this government They're wasting money. $80 million, not finished. Because contractors were doing some work outside. Governments in the region. And you said that we knew we were having World Quaker Creek for a year. <laughs> I mean, and these facts are so easy. It's so easy, Mr. Speaker. The bid, the bid for work. St. Lucia knew. St. <laughs> Lucia only knew in September. In, in September that we were, we were bidding for the world for the World Cup. We won the bill bid in October, Mr. Speaker. He said we knew for a year. He said we knew for a year. He said we knew for a year, Mr. Speaker. No, Mr. Speaker. He also speaks about he also speaks about secrets, Mr. Speaker. Who is speaking about more secrets than the leader of, of, of the opposition? He speaks about secrets. Every statutory instrument in this country. Every statutory instrument in this country, Mr. Speaker, is published for the public to see. Every SI. All incentives that this government gives is in an SI. Can't tell fool, fool people about secrets. You know, nonsense. Every SI. And look, we did it today. We did it today. Started the instruments. We did the instruments. We did it today. But you know, Unfortunately, the um, member for Castro is East. What? The printer was not able to give us hard copies. Okay. So, but soft copies were sent. Soft copies, right. Started the instruments. Example. Started the instruments. Everybody who gets an incentive, Minister for Tourism, Saturday Instruments. I have it, I don't read it. Anybody who gets an incentive, Mr. Speaker, comes a public document. What secret are you talking about? All the incentives GPS gave got was a public document in the SI. Mr. Speaker, you know, shame is a hell of a thing. When, when a man is ashamed, when a man loses a Miku North seat, he must feel shameful. Because if you find yourself in a position where the seat of John Compton, you lost it. If I ever lose Labry, I resign immediately. <laughs> if I ever lose Labry, I resign immediately. I will not lead a party that loses Labry. But I'll never lead a party that loses John Compton's seat, never. And when you suffer from that shame, because you lost John Compton's seat, you must do and say whatever you want to do and say. You must go to the extreme to see if you can win back John Compton's seat. But I can tell you something, even though you said that the people jetty is a toilet, you're not going to win back Mikunov at all. Yeah. Even though you call the people jetty a toilet. You understand? Because you, you say a lot of things, sanctimonious. A lot of, you go all over the world, you castigate St. Lucia, you speak to people abroad, you say there's no democracy, you say all kinds of things. And you come here and you pretend that you like poor people. The same poor people you like. You are the ones, when you cause them to lose their sources of income, when you pray that they lose their sentient visa status, when you try to promote it just because you lost an election and you lost Mikunov, who do you think is benefiting from that? 
Who is benefiting from that? Selfishness, Mr. Speaker. Selfishness. Because you believe you're entitled to run this country. No one is entitled to run this country. This country belongs to the people of St. Lucia and the people determine who leads it. The people alone will determine it. So you and your surrogates can continue all your attacks. Continue all attacks. We are focused. We are focused. And the people of St. Lucia understand what we're doing. Look, I mean, you castigate, call for war, I wish that there, there's, there's crime, wish that there are murders. You, one of your people say that they have a hundred murders, praying for these things to happen because you're not in political power. Because you're not in government. That's why, you, that's why you're doing these things, but we are remaining focused. And the people of St. Lucia are seeing what is happening in St. Lucia. You're seeing it. St. Jude Hospital, <coughs> you organize a direct award for the Jewel Hospital, where you're paying one percent interest per day. Talk about financial management. Financial management. One percent per day interest. You know what? You know what I did? Let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did. If you know, you pretend that you do not know. <coughs> For the extension of St. Jude, we said that we are going back based on advice. No member of the cabinet, no member of the cabinet ever made a pronouncement on the future of St. Jude if we did not get advice from experts. You said that you had a state of the art <laughs> State of the art hospital, 60% complete. The man hasn't got one partition in there, you know. <laughs> he has no utilities. He has, he has windows when rain falling is leaking. He has cladding that we have to repair. Water coming in there. He hasn't got the thing of a hospital is fixtures and fixtures and furnitures. He hasn't got one air conditioning unit. He has nothing. Hospital is 60% complete. 60% and the hospital finishes in six months. I mean, if you can tell people that, if you can tell people that you have a box that you have to build, that is leaking, you have no partitions, you have no have one, no roof, you tell people that's 60% complete, and you, and you pay a man, or you wanted to pay a man at 1% interest a day for 70 million dollars in one year. That is your financial management. That's your financial management. So let's let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did. If you forget, let me tell you what I did. I appointed a group of construction experts. Non-paid, yes. Yeah. You understand? I, I, you know, see, you believe that you can say whatever you want, you can insult people, you can say, and nobody will, will respond. But I'm not responding with insults, you know. I am not responding with insults. I'm responding with facts. That's why I with facts, not insults, not in you and no, not running and cry, not running and tell people what's not true, not running in, in the back of the van. And that's why I respond. I respond with facts. I'll tell you something. We appointed a committee to look into the St. Jude Hospital. The same as the airport. Same as the airport. We didn't just go like mad people and stop this and stop that. And the committee told us that it was better for us to continue work on the old buildings than to do what you did. On the box. On the box. In your building of the box, you destroyed two buildings. And when they ask you why, you destroyed two, how can you I use what was destroyed? You destroyed two buildings, and your excuse was they had a, a, a tree growing in the building. That's the excuse they gave, you know. There was a tree growing in the building, so they, 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 they destroyed two buildings. They destroyed two buildings. And we not like you, but it's not your money. It's a taxpayer's money. We said 
that we will mean, and we're not ashamed to say it. Since you've taken taxpayers' money already and built a box, we said we'll utilize two buildings in the box. But in your box configuration, you had to use all the other buildings in the St. Jude Hospital. That's what you're not telling the people of St. Lucia. That's what you're not telling them. In your configuration of the box, you had to be using buildings in the original St. Jude. But you never tell people that. You never tell to people. Only now. You never tell the people. But I'm telling them now because I tell you, I'm saying to you, when you respond with, with, with your propaganda and your insults, I respond with facts. That's what I respond with. And I always tell you, I always tell everybody, especially young people, fact check you. Fact check you. When you say something, don't take it for granted. Even though you say it with, with an accent. Don't take it for granted. Fact check you. Fact check you. Look at your history. Go in Hansard. Look at what you said. Look at your interviews. That's what they must do. And do, do the same thing to me. Yes. Go in Hansard. Look at my record. Look at my record. Look at what I do. And let's go and deal with it. Not what you say or how you say it. The facts. And I tell people to fact check you. Fact check you. So let's get back to, to, to St. Jude. So we... Employed that committee, not employed. We will be employing them. We engaged them. Thank you, sir. That committee, and they gave us a recommendation that is clear for you to see. And cabinet agreed with their recommendation. So we went to this to Saudi, so Saudi fund, and we asked for a loan to complete Saint Jude Hospital and the National Stadium. But the Saudis are like the Kuwaitis. And remember, you stop the growth in the highway because the Kuwaitis ask you to bid. That's why you have traffic problems. That's why all the problems in growth in now, you stop the growth in the highway. Fact. There was a plan for the growth in the highway. And the money. And, the money. and if all goes well, next month I will be having discussions in St. Lucia here with people from the Kuwaiti Fund for the continuation of the growth of the highway. <clears throat> Next month. Next month. And the interest rates for that, you will hear about it. So, the, the Saudi said we had to tender. So there was an international tender for the human for the Central Hospital. A tender, international tender Anybody could, could have applied. Anybody. Anybody could have tendered for St. Jude Hospital. And that tender. But that's nothing new. That's nothing new. And also, there was, there was, there was also a tender for the engineering services. But you know what you did when you were in, when you were in government? You know, Mr. Speaker, the World Bank, and I'm sorry to go from pillar to post, you know, because this, this, that government did so many things, and the company pays something more than just thing. The World Bank says that every project, they must tender for the engineering, the engineering services, because they did not want to tender for the engineering services. They said to the World Bank, we'll pay our own engineering services because they didn't want to tender. They said to the World Bank, and you know, this sanctimonious behavior that we'll pay for our engineering, and then again, I'm not like that. I could come here and read for you the engineers, how much money they got on tendering, on non-tendering, because his government decided that they were no longer tendering for engineering services, and the people of St. Lucia had to pay that. Talk about wasting taxpayers' money. The people are still paid because you wanted to give who you want the engineering services. I'm not going to call nobody name here. I'm not like you. And you know well. You know who you gave all the engineering services. And you know who's friend of who. Yeah, you know Knows very well. But you come and you pay sanctimonious. Why are you calling nobody name? You know well. So back to St. Jude, Mr. Speaker. So right now, right now, right now. 
Right now. Right now, Mr. Speaker. Right now, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> you know, Mr. Speaker, I. Mr. Speaker, St. Jude Hospital. So right now, Mr. Speaker, the Standards Board is looking, has looked at the proposals, and it has gone back to Saudi for no, and no objection, Mr. Speaker. That's how we do. Our, that's how we do our business. When the no objection comes, we'll have the cost and work on St. Jude will continue. But regardless of how you pray, and regardless of how you try your best to destabilize goats in the hospital, all kind of foolishness I had, St. Jude Hospital is going to finish for the people of St. Lucia. So you can jump high, you can jump low, you can Try to destabilize. You can write whatever you want on Facebook. You United Pack. I mean, yeah, anything you want. United Pack. I mean, assess and the whole cabinet is going to be there. And if I have my way, it's going to be there on a Friday. So, and then you'll tell the people of Saint Lucia that you went to open the toilet. So you see, Mr. Speaker. So your history. When, before your history was known, the people of St. Lucia believed you. Before your history was known, the people of St. Lucia believed you. But you came and they gave you five and a half years. You nearly took six. In fact, you were thinking of saying because of COVID, there, there's no election. Yeah, that's right. You were thinking of that. He said it, he said it. Because of COVID, and like, you're thinking that was written somewhere. Yeah, right. You understand? <coughs> and now, it was said somewhere. You want me to tell them you said it, I go tell you. You understand? Oh Lord! Now in, in my constituency come in and, and the they put on Facebook, Philip JP, I paid people cowards. Come to my constituency, the fellas. I, haven't, I wasn't even there. I wasn't even there because I know he can come, Rose can come, and what's the other one name? The following customs Chico. The Chicos have fought me all their life. That's not new. They fought me all their life. And I beat them six times. So fighting me again, it no matter. All the people you have there, they fought me all their life. Nothing new. But you come in my constituency, you walk around, a dog nearly bite you. You think, you think I know that? You're lucky she had jump, drop, drop the dog on you. I miss my calling. My, my calling, my miss calling because I beat you. That's my calling, I beat you. I wasn't there. You I beat. I don't care. It's you I beat. And I win my seat six times. Six. Come, come again. You won Sufre. Huh? And you lost Sufre. Don't talk for the speaker. Don't talk. You all say nothing about him. You all write enough thing about him. Don't play you. Listen, don't play you simple the speaker now. You all were all on United Pack saying thing about him. United Pack. No, no, no. Don't play now you sympathetic towards him. You all say anything because nobody, you all do anything, politics, anything. You all say anything. You understand? Don't play. You all sympathetic now. Show me, Mr. Speaker. I want to play that tip for him. So, Mr. Speaker, so he comes here. He comes here. He comes here, Mr. Speaker, and talks about secret deals. Talks about tax gouging. Listen to them. The, we increase the tax threshold. We increase the tax threshold. So people now who get less $24,000 and less will pay no tax. Contractors with incomes of $10,000 will pay no tax. 
we gave the biggest tax and amnesty in the history of St. Lucia, that people, no interest, no fines, no penalties, no VAT on tax arrears. And you talk about tax gouging. But what it doesn't say is because of the growth and the expansion of the economy, because the economy is expanding, that the revenue is increasing, added to the fact there are some inflation pressures on there. That's why revenue is increasing, because of the management of the economy. That's why it's increasing. That's what is happening this week. And what you do not want to see is for the first time that this country has, for long, this country has a primary surplus on its current accounts. A primary surplus. And these are facts, the metrics, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to end by telling the taxpayers of this country and the pensioners that this increase is just the first in a series of increases. The first. When we sit and we discuss, we, next year, we see if we can increase it further, Mr. Speaker. Next year, we want to increase it further because the pensioners of this country, the people that you ridicule because the Minister of Health said people 80 years and over must get free medical, medical care. You ridicule them. You put them on, on, your, on your page. What do you call them? Teddy Bobbies? Yeah. You ridicule them. You ridicule them. And now you're playing at the effect towards them. So, Mr. Speaker, I thank members for their for the support, Mr. Speaker. And there's a lot more I have to say, you know, a lot more. I can speak, you see, I've told him, anything you see, I can speak for 40 days and 40 nights about anything he says, anything he says, because his speech and his words are not grounded in facts, not grounded in truth, not grounded in reality, because his history comes before him. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.